Greetings, unsettled souls. Yeah! Welcome to the Correct Views. This is Sam B. DeGangie doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. You guys know who I am. You guys know what I do. And I'm doing it now. It's the massive Fukushima update. Um, I want to say, before I get into this, and, uh, and my, uh, my loyal people here at... Uh, on the Media Speaks have been watching me while I get this set up. Make sure you subscribe to this show on more than one platform. Up here is the HD. That goes on to the correct views on YouTube, which you also want to make sure you're a part of, along with the Media Speaks, who I just talked about, which is you guys. And then, of course, the Facebook. And on Facebook, Samuel DeGangie, you can find it from the correct views. There's one site that's now defunct. But you can tell. It'll be the site that has the newest stuff on it. And uh, for those on Facebook, since it's a little different than uh, YouTube, I have been doing something called Blurb is the Word, which is a, uh, a small blurb about some of the uh, news of the day. It's been easier to do it that way since the show currently uh, does not have the talent that it did in terms of help and it makes it a lot easier and a lot more coherent to do it that way. So uh, make sure you look for Blurb is the Word. That's on Facebook for all the Facebook subscribers. And I've more than given people time to trickle in, so now we're going to get into it. Um, listener supported, you can donate at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com through PayPal. That is thecorrectviews at hotmail.com through PayPal. This is uh, from Gizmodo. Fukushima's contaminated wastewater could be too risky to dump into the ocean. Now, but one of the reasons is uh, due to the fact that there is an under-reporting about just what is in this. Now, I do have the smartest listeners anywhere on the internet, and for the last show, a uh, listener pointed out to me, uh, I thought this was actually uh, very helpful, that it is harder to test background, um, to, it's harder to test uranium and plutonium uh, and things of that nature than it is to test for um, uh, cesium and strontium. So that's why you don't see as many studies. Not all of those which aren't reporting it are doing it on purpose or for nefarious reasons to cover things up. Of course, we've documented on here where some have. That's certainly true, but that doesn't mean that it is the, uh, that's always the case. But I have pointed out for years the dangers of the saying that the half-life of this element or the half-life of that element automatically shows us with any kind of reliability that it's safe to sell food from Fukushima or safe to return or uh, safe to eat products that come from there. One of the reasons for that is the half-life of plutonium. Hey Google, what is the half-life of plutonium? Here's what I understood from Wikipedia. The half-life of plutonium 239 is 2.36 days. Do you want a little more context? Hey Google, what's the half-life of radioactive plutonium? Here's what I understood from Wikipedia. The half-life of plutonium-239 is 2.36 days. Do you want a little more context? The, uh... That's what you get for counting on that life. Half-life of radioactive plutonium. And Sorry, what? I didn't understand. Hey, but I found something else. Do you want to know how to calculate the half-life of a radioactive substance? Hey, Google, no. Am I the only one that has noticed that the answers that you get from the assistants have gotten worse and worse and less reliable as we go? All right, I, I, it's fine. I found what I was looking for here. Anyway, and uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, the, the half-life is a, a way of measuring how long radioactive decay is. And I know that's it's fundamental for many people, but to those who don't actually... Um, follow this on a regular basis and they hear half-life, they automatically assume that it, it's universal in some way, that, that all radioactive elements decay the same. 
It is 24,100. All right, let's go to this. This is, uh, plutonium is a radioactive chemical element. Oh, now I have an ad. How do you, it's not an ad, it's a refresh. So you don't even have ads on Wikipedia. Good Lord, the internet is slow today. And I'm supposed to have the fastest service, so go figure. Um, plutonium is a radioactive chemical element with the symbol PU in the atomic number 94. Um, the half-life 240,000 years. Do you understand that? Do you understand how long that is? It's the... It, and we're talking about moving people back into an area when it is known to have this kind of danger in it. Furthermore, we're talking about releasing this water into the ocean, into the sea, with plutonium in it, which has a half-life as it is quite cumbersome for us to find in 240,000 years. Almost a decade ago, the Tohoku Oki earthquake and tsunami triggered an explosion at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, causing the most severe nuclear accident since Chernobyl and releasing an unprecedented amount of radioactive contamination into the ocean. In the years since, it says there has been a drawn-out cleanup process and water radiation levels at the plant have fallen to safe levels everywhere except in the areas closest to the now-closed plant. But, as a study from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, now, whenever these idiots come on my page and start saying that I don't give any sources, a study from the Woods Hole Oceanographic, Oceanographic Institution, published in Science on Thursday, shows there's another growing hazard contaminated wastewater. Radioactive cooling water is leaking out of the melted-down react nuclear reactors and mixing with the groundwater there. In order to prevent the groundwater from leaking into the ocean, the water is pumped into more than 1,000 tanks using a sophisticated cleaning process, which does not take out tritium, by the way. It's from France. The, the, the cleaning system is from Viva la France. Uh, workers have been able to remove some of this contamination and divert groundwater flows, reducing the amount of water that is collected each day. But those tanks are filling up, and some Japanese officials have suggested uh, that it be dumped into the ocean. Um, according to a new study, that's not the only radioactive contaminant. Listen, listen to this. Listen to this. It says that, uh, of course, it removes all particles except tritium that has a half-life of 12 years. You notice again, there's no mention of plutonium. Examining TEPCO's own 2018 data, WHOI researcher Ken Busler found that other isotopes remain in the treated wastewater, not just tritium. We're learning something new today. I thought it was just tritium as well. But there's also carbon-14, cobalt-60, and strontium-90. Strontium-90 is a direct path to bone cancer. He found these particles all take much longer to decay than tritium, and that fish and marine organisms absorb, uh, absorb them comparatively easily. And guess what happens then? Guess who eats the fish? Because they're sold to us under the guise of being safe, and then they start giving us all these cesium numbers and not talking about strontium, not talking about uh, cobalt 60. This means they could be potentially hazardous to humans, it goes on. And the environment for much longer and much more and in more ways uh, complex than the tritium, according to this very study. Though TEPCO's data shows that there is far less of these contaminants in the wastewater tanks than tritium. Remember, they said there weren't any. Now there's far less. Notice how they just oh well yeah there's a little bit of bone cancer in there. It's not a big deal. Busler notes that their levels vary widely from tank to tank and that more than 70% of the tanks would need secondary treatment to reduce concentrations 
below that required by the law. And of course we know that the law has been raised in order to even allow them to contemplate the release, and yet still it's too high. It's a big deal, friends. As is uh, going on with our plutonium uh, study here, I gave you guys a bit of a sneak preview because it's so utterly important that I didn't want you to zone out on me. Futurity. Particles from the Fukushima meltdown contained plutonium, dated August 6th of 2020. To try to articulate just how bad this is in normal terms is almost too... It, it, that and uranium are arguably the most toxic... Well, I think they are the most toxic elements ever discovered. Ever. 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 Many of the particles released, by the way, are not even, uh, they have to be made. They're not natural particles to begin with. They're combinations. Microscopic particles emitted during Fukushima nuclear disaster contain plutonium, according to a new study. We knew this from Dr. Arnie Gunderson, for crying out loud. The microscopic radioactive particles formed inside the Fukushima reactors when the melting nuclear fuel interacted with the Reactor structural concrete. Nearly 10 years after the meltdown at Fukushima, it caused a nuclear disaster. The new information about the extent and severity of the meltdown and the distribution patterns of the plutonium have broad implications for understanding the mobility of plutonium during a nuclear accident. Now, as, um, as Google pointed out earlier, uh, it do does depend on what kind of plutonium. What they're talking about here are all, all of the uh, instances of it. Pardon me. In other words, they have uh, discovered it in uh, all forms of plutonium. The study used an extraordinary array of analytical techniques in order to complete the description of the particles at the atomic scale, says co-author Rod Ewing, another source. He's the co-director of the Center of International Security and Cooperation. It's called CISIC, or KISIC, whatever, at Stanford University. The researchers found that due to loss of containment in the reactors, the particles were released into the atmosphere, and many were then deposited many miles from the reactor sites. Now, they're treating this like this is some kind of earth-shattering news when uh, we've been showing here that it was part of the black goo that was appearing all over Japan and is one of the reasons why the Olympics are nothing short of toxic were they to take place then. We've covered all of that. Studies have shown that cesium-rich particles, or CSMPs, are highly radioactive and primarily composed of glass with silica from concrete, and uh, radioactive cesium. It's a volatile fission product formed in the reactors, of course. But the environmental impact of their distribution is still an active subject of research and debate. Not if you follow studies outside of the industry, by the way. The new work offers a much-needed insight into the Fukushima nuclear power plant meltdowns. The study used an extraordinary array of analytical techniques in order to complete the description of the particles at the atomic scale. The researchers used a combination of analytical techniques, including synchrotron-based micro-x-ray analysis, secondary ion mass spectrometry, and high-resolution transmission electron microscopy, a little bit take two, to find and characterize the plutonium, plutonium that was present in the CSMP samples. They initially discovered incredibly small uranium dioxide inclusions of less than 10 nanometers in diameter inside the CMP, CSMPs. This indicated possible inclusion of a nuclear fuel inside the particles. And once you get this in your body, it's in you for good. And it continues to create uh, microscopic explosions, for lack of a better word, uh, inside of your cells, which lead to cell damage, which leads to uh, cells not dying properly and mutating. And you know what that's called? That's called cancer. 
detailed analysis revealed for the first time that plutonium oxide concentrates were associated with the uranium and that the isotope composition of the uranium and plutonium matched that calculated for the FDNPP irradiated fuel inventory. These results strongly suggest that the nanoscale heterogeneity of this common is normal nuclear fuels is still present in the fuel debris that remains inside the site's damaged reactors, says geochemist Satoshi Yutsunomiya, Yutsunomiya, sorry, sir, from the Akishi University, who led the team. This is important information as it tells us the extent and severity of the meltdown. Further, this is important information for the eventual decommissioning of the damaged reactors and the long-term management of the wastes, he says. With regards to the environmental impact, he goes on, we already know that the CSMPs were distributed over a wide region in Japan. Small amounts of plutonium were likely dispersed in the same this is important information for the eventual decommissioning as well. It's, uh, it says that the, the amount of plutonium is low compared to the cesium, which is hardly encouraging news. And these are all things that you're going to want to keep into the forefront of your mind when you're hearing about Japan being safe, or Fukushima being safe, or these trolls trying to stand up for the nuclear industry in some way. Uh, it's indefensible at this point. There's no other way to put it. It is simply absolutely indefensible at this point that anybody would stand up for the nuclear industry. And I want to point out something that came up in a debate I was having with a friend of mine uh, not all that long ago. And uh, that was the incidence of cancer being astronomically higher in areas that are close to nuclear power plants. And in the study that I had shown him, uh, it was bladder cancer. But you can find it with a great number of cancer. Cancer rates are always higher near nuclear power plants with out fail, without deviation, without exception. That's why I talk about it, that's why I'm against it, because what I'm talking about is true, and those who listen will be able to be the agents of change which is needed to prevent them furthering, further damaging anything with the DNA, to be quite honest. And uh, that, friends, brings us to the Dumdy of the Day. Where's my dumb D music? I've got nothing today. I've got nothing. I've got a slow internet. And, uh, God, what is the internet? What is the internet being run by a, a mouse on a wheel? Friends, if you want to donate, you can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com. Do it through PayPal. Uh, the, uh, Shun, the, uh, the Ashahi symbol, and they've been on here this show quite often. Robot to use brush to retrieve melted fuel at the Fukushima plant. Now, as many of you know, any robot that's gotten anywhere near this has been melted down. They've only recently been able to, uh, uh, piece together enough machinery to be able to get some idea of what they're dealing with. And this here is a, uh, a sneak preview of some of uh, what's to come in terms of robotics. Because we don't have the technology. We still don't, by the way. Not this contraption either. We don't have the technology to, to put this plant into cold shutdown. The claim was a lie. We can't even get near it. So the cores are like miniature neutron stars, for crying out loud. So... The, if any of this is to have any hope of even looking slightly better, it's going to hinge on robotics. Uh, a robotic arm under development in Britain will use a brush and vacuum vessel on its end to collect melted fuel in a step toward retrieving debris at the crippled plant. 
details of the device, which will start collecting debris at the number two reactor on a trial basis next year, were announced on July the 2nd. So we're still, you know, a year away. Meanwhile, we just wait for another earthquake to hit, right? The government and plan operator, TEPCO, which is GE, which is General Electric, which is where you never want to have your money in a mutual fund for any reason, plan to retrieve melted fuel at the number two reactor ahead of the two other reactors because radiation levels are relatively low. Yeah, depending on what you test. You might only get a relative cancer, huh? The number two reactor, along with the number one and number three reactors, of course, suffered meltdowns following the uh, 2011 earthquake. The situation inside the number two reactor is relatively unknown through past inspections. It has been confirmed that apparent debris in the lower part of its containment vessel can be collected with a robot. Yeah, good luck. Measuring, I mean, literally, it's, the radioactivity has fried countless robots. We've covered them. You can find them all over my channel on YouTube. Measuring 22 meters long and weighing 4.6 tons, the robotic arm will be made of high-strength stainless steel that will not bend when stretched out. It will be used, it will be inserted, excuse me, into a closed box connected to a hole made on the side of the containment vessel and remotely operated to prevent radioactive substances from being released. So the robot's going to get juiced so you never get near it again. The arm will attach a powered nuclear debris to its brush and also suck the debris with its vet, a vacuum vessel. Under the plan, debris totaling approximately one gram or so will be collected in each of the several rounds of the trial procedure. An experiment will start in Britain in early August with the use of a model of the containment vessel. The robotic arm, it goes on, will be transported to Japan around February for the training of the operators in Japan's Atomic Energy Agency. Uh, it's in Nahara, Fukushima Prefecture. Melted fuel to be removed is estimated to record a radiation reading of 6 millisieverts per hour, even at distances of 20 centimeters from it. That means that the annual dose limit for ordinary individuals of 1 millisievert will be reached in 10 minutes. Yeah, I'm sure that's great for the thyroid. Why did it get the dumb of the day? It got the dumb of the day, friends, because everyone was warned. Everyone was Warned. Scientists, geologists, they said, you don't build this power plant here because an earthquake will hit this region within the time frame of this plant's life. And even if it hadn't, they had mentioned the problem of the fuel which would be left on the island. And of course, Japan is an island created by an earthquake, and it will be an earthquake which one day takes it out. And now we have an even much bigger problem, of course, now that we have all of these nuclear power plants and various debris there. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so. Good night, friends. God bless. Do remember to hit share and subscribe. Let me know that you did it in the comment line. Have a good day. God bless.